again. Let's turn in our Bibles this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. While you're turning there, thank you for being here this morning. I had several uh, messages about people traveling today, and traveling prayers, and several families uh, are traveling. So let's remember all those families traveling today. But also, I uh, want to remind you that tonight uh, we will be having service. Sister Shannon Joyner, Reverend Shannon Joyner, will be here bringing the word tonight. If you want to come and check that out, Freedom will be in the house. They will have the drama team rehearsals. They will have the, uh, the you know, youth praise team rehearsal as well. And so let's, let's all uh, support that tonight if you're able. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night as well. Amen on Wednesday night. We'll uh, be back in here as well. And I believe they had uh, 36 to 40 teenagers over in the Fusion yeah. Church. This Tuesday night, now this Tuesday night we will have a new members meeting. This will be the last one we have this year. So if you are here and you've decided and been praying about Christian fellowship, uh, you know, you want to take that next step as a member. Amen. Visitors are always welcome, but members are expected. Amen. Amen. I believe there's a commitment that has settled down in your soul. You say, hey, I want to commit to trying to be here every week. And, and uh, even maybe even being involved if the church has a, a need somewhere, then I want you to uh, pray about coming to the new members meeting. Amen. Amen. And reading over that information with Brother Jason, Pastor Jason, uh, on Tuesday night. And then next Sunday, we will have our door opening. Uh, where we actually, during praise and worship, welcome in those who have come to the new members meeting and they have uh, uh, showed the desire to join the church. So that's always an exciting time. During this week, starting tomorrow, I want uh, the church as a whole uh, to pray about dedicating some focused time into prayer and fasting this week. Amen. It's not a, a straight whole thing where you turn your life upside down trying to go and buy $150 worth of fruit and vegetables, or you go to the Golden Corral and you load your plate down with salads this big and vegetables this big and a little bit of sugar-free gravy or whatever. <laughs> Driving yourself crazy trying to stick to a list of plans. It becomes just all-out madness and chaos. How about we just dedicate some days where you say, I'm going to skip a meal and I'm going to give God some glory. Amen. And in this time, I'm going to drink me a bottle of water and I'm going to pray. And I'm going to seek God, and God will honor that. Amen? How about that? And then if you want to stick to a Daniel fast in the evenings or in the mornings with some fruit or whatever you can, amen? But just because you're not doing it every day don't make you less of a worshiper. It don't make you less of a Christian. Right. But dedicate some time where you do kind of slide the plate back and say, you know what? I, I think I can make it through lunch today with just a banana. Or I can just, uh, you know, just dedicate this time to some prayer. And it's not just about skipping meals either, okay? That's a glorified diet. It's about replacing that meal time with some prayer time. Amen. amen. When you would have normally spent about 10 to 15 minutes doing this, amen, instead of that, uh, do this. Amen. Do this. Amen. And God will bless your life. God will take you to another level. And when He's taking you and you and you and you and you and me to another level, guess what? The church goes to another level. Amen. So think about that this week as well. All right, is that all the announcements we have this morning that we need to get on? Amen, I believe so. So let's get into this message this morning. Matthew chapter 27. Amen. And, oh, yes, the next Sunday. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, next Sunday night, I think we're going to do our uh, song. That's in your bulletin. So get ready for that. That'll be the last one this year. Because after uh, this month, it'll be kind of too cold to do that. All right. Now, Matthew chapter 27. Now, where we are, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. His earthly ministry in the flesh of His own self is nearing its end, with Him being betrayed and handed over to be impaled upon an executioner's cross. Yet it was by the order of Caiaphas, the high priest of that year, Therefore, he was not executed like the criminal on the left or the right. But Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, might have died on an executioner's cross, but he wasn't executed like a criminal. He was offered up as a sacrifice because Pilate washed his hands 
and, and basically handed over the decision to Caiaphas. Said, do you want to release Barabbas or do you want to kill Jesus? They said, kill Jesus. So Caiaphas, the high priest, had to uh, make that call. And because of that, Jesus was offered up. Amen? He was offered up as the sacrificial spotless lamb for the sins of mankind. And at this point, Jesus is nearing death. And it says in verse 45 of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, it says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. Revelation students, we know a little bit about what that means, don't we? The man is calling for Elijah because of the prophecy saying that Elijah would have something to do with that. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge. One of the Roman guards took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Now look, I want you to look at verse 51. Then behold, the veil, the veil of the temple was torn, was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked. And the rocks were split. And the graves were open. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, truly, this was the Son of God. God. Amen. I know we've been in the Old Testament for quite a few weeks in the book of Numbers. We've been doing some messages on Moses. We'll have a few more of those to offer to you in the oncoming weeks. But I wanted to take a break and kind of go to something that the Holy Spirit has just kind of invaded our time with. Even though that this message was given to me uh, many months ago, possibly even six months or more ago. God knew a million years ago that we kind of take a break from the book of Numbers. And that unplanned little study series that we've kind of been doing it on Sunday morning. And we would come back to something that we need to reiterate. That we need to realize that the Holy Spirit wants to drive home. This is the Holy Ghost service. Amen. Hallelujah. And so there's a message today that needs to be driven home to every single person in this place today. I want you to realize what God is saying today. I want us to, to talk this out. I want you to walk this out. I want you to live this every day and be reminded of what God is trying to say today. Do we have a deal? Amen. How many of you are ready for the breaking of the bread? How many of you are ready today? For the word of God today. Yeah. Are you ready to have your soul impacted? Are you ready to have yourselves challenged and changed? Yeah. Amen. Are you ready to go further with God? Then don't let me hear it. But let him yeah. hear it. By saying amen. And give it to us today. Come on. Come on. Give it to us today. Hallelujah. Father we come to you today God. And we ask you right now Jesus. To help every heart, every mind, every soul. Hone in on what it is you're trying to say and proclaim today, Lord God. Oh, we know today, God, hallelujah, we can get lost and distracted in many things. But God, I ask right now, Jesus, that you help us be able to focus, God. Help every hearer, every listener, hallelujah, of the word today. Be able to hone in and focus, God, on what it is you're saying, God. Help me as a preacher today, God, to be able to declare your word today, God, in this gospel truth that we find today. Oh, we praise you for the time of worship. We praise you for the time of small groups this morning. But God is preaching time, and every devil in hell is getting scared right now. Because the people of God, hallelujah, are being armed, hallelujah, with life 
change and realization, Lord, that many should already know and probably already know. But sometimes the best lessons we learn in life are the lessons that we have to learn again. And so, God, I ask you right now to help us walk in this thing, God. And I'm proclaiming and declaring today that many that may have been suffering from weakness, they've been suffering from struggling. Lord God, they've been getting up and been knocked back down again, huh? and they're used to staying down. Today, they're going to get up and they're going to stay up and they're going to keep walking and knowing who they are because the word is being proclaimed from here today. Hallelujah. Let no one not have an excuse to grow and go higher today. In Jesus' holy name. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. Shout amen. Hallelujah. Today's message is titled, A Veil Torn Life. Say it with me. A veil torn life. Strength and confidence are two huge components in life. Amen. We need strength. We need confidence. Without them, there's weakness and struggle. As the people of God, yes, we do and we will have difficulties. But guess what? We cannot, I say again, cannot be defeated. For over 2,000 years ago, a price was paid for that kind of strength. A price was paid over 2,000 years ago for that kind of confidence. I said a price was paid over 2,000 years ago for that kind of freedom. And on that day, so much was won. So much was gained. As Christians today, we should desire, come on, we should desire to take the full and complete benefit of that victory, of that access. Hallelujah. I want you to let that seep in. The truth we just read, the truth that we just recited, should be declared in the life of the born again Christian. Amen. Today's message could ask the question, are we living veil torn lives? Are we living as though the veil has been torn? You didn't know God was going to use you in a conversation that we were having. But there was a conversation we were having last year. And we were saying some things. And you said it was though the veil has not been torn in their lives. Amen. And all of a sudden I walked away. And I said, hmm, God, you want to preach something right there. Oh, it is though the veil has not been torn in their lives. But see, the veil has been torn. Hallelujah. And all you got to do is say yes to that veil being torn. But if you want to keep hanging it back up again and keep shutting yourself off from God. That's on you. Amen. Oh, did that sound mean? I'm sorry. Did that sound mean? Did that sound disheartening? No. Amen. But we make the decision on how far we want to go with Him. Hallelujah. Do we want it to remain torn? Or do we want to put it back up again? And have to start sacrificing blocks and all that kind of stuff. You know how what kind of work we'd have on Sunday if we had to do that? Thank God the veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. But have you allowed it to be torn in your life? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Don't get mad with me today now. It's my, it's my anniversary. Happy 12th anniversary, sweetheart. Amen. I love you. So don't you keep singing that song. It's more embarrassing me. Hallelujah. So in our text, from the gospel account of Matthew, we see the temple veil torn and all that took place afterwards. Now it's important to realize the significance of the torn veil by knowing the origin of the veil. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I will get to that in just a moment. But right now, let's go to the review real quick. Amen? I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's go to verse 45. It says, Now... From the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Immediately they run to him with a sponge. But look at verse 50. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he yielded up his spirit. Meaning, he died. He died like any other human being would die as far as taking their last breath and being uh, you know, not alive anymore. The price was paid. He yielded up his spirit. The moment Jesus died, the price for sin that satisfied God the Father had been paid. 
You see, before that, the blood of animals really never satisfied, but God said that's what you'll have to do. And there was a certain uh, process that had to, they had to go through to do that, and we'll explain that in a moment. But when Jesus took His last breath, the price was paid. And it says in that moment, verse 51, Then behold, I like that word. Somebody shout behold. Behold. Pastor John Sharp preached a message one time at our men's meeting years ago before I ever became the pastor. And I remember every time I see the word behold, I remember him getting barefooted and he liked to do like this. And he said, whenever you see the word behold, get ready. Something, something's about to happen. <laughs> Some, something's about to happen. And he would do like this. So every time I see the word behold, I'll just be reading my Bible and I'll get back to it. Hallelujah. Something's about to happen. Behold, and something did happen, praise God. The veil of the temple was torn. The veil that was up, that separated the holy place from the holies of holies. The place where the Levitical priests could do the priestly duties from the place where the Ark of the Covenant that represented the very, very presence of Almighty God, a righteous God, a holy God, a powerful God. Have you ever tried to look at the sun and just stare at it and after a while you just can't take it anymore? No, God was even ten more times powerful than that because He made that very sun that you can't stare at. Because it's so long. Hallelujah. And it says that behold, the veil of the temple was torn. It was torn. Hallelujah. Because the price for sin had been satisfied by Jesus' death on the cross. And it was torn in two. And it was torn from top to bottom. Not from the bottom to the top. Never get that confused. From the bottom to the top. If it had been torn from the bottom to the top, men could have gone in very quickly and they could have torn it from the floor and ripped it all the way up the middle. Amen. But God said, no, when we tear that veil, I'm going to tear it from the top to the bottom. Too high for them to climb up there real quick and try to imitate me. Amen. So that everybody will know that this is something that man couldn't do. That only I, God says, I can do. From the top to the bottom. And so it was ripped from the top to the bottom. And immediately, the earth quaked. The earth quaked. The earth shook. Now we know that the Bible says that when Jesus took his last, last breath, Jesus went into the belly of the earth. His spirit went into the belly of the earth. And so as his powerful God spirit, hallelujah, was going into the earth, the earth couldn't handle that kind of power. So I had to pray. It had to shake. Hallelujah. And sometimes, hallelujah, if you've never been in a charismatic spirit filled church, you may say, why are they doing like that? Why are they shaking? Why are they trembling? Well, when you get the power of all that, Hallelujah. I asked him 
more than I spend in the battle, I'm going to Lord, let me come in there and just give up. Hallelujah. But he took authority over death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. And it says death, hell, and the grave. Yet he kind of did it in a reverse order. He come out of the grave. Hallelujah. Amen. He had already, he had already taken uh, authority over hell. And then he took authority over death when everybody saw that he was alive. Amen. Amen. And so the graves were opened, many of the bodies of the saints. Who were the saints? Everybody who had trusted God and faithfully served God and loved God and listened to God, but had died before that time. Amen. Amen. We're talking about Old Testament saints. David was walking around. Hallelujah. Abraham was walking around. Hallelujah. And the world's going on here. Woo. They were walking around because Jesus has gone to that resting place, paradise. Hallelujah. And set the captive free. Hallelujah. And there's debate on whether or not he had even, that he, did he set Hades free? Did he set the tormented side of hell free that day and emptied it out? Well, we don't know. That's, a, that's, a, that's something to ponder on and think about. I'm not going to get into that today. But I know it said he set captivity captive. Amen. And he broke loose some chains that day. And the Old Testament saints, those who trusted God, they were walking around. Amen. Free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let your minds go wander. Just. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. That's just a little debate going on. But how many of we know we need to spend our time preaching God's word and not preaching debates? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So after his resurrection, these, these Old Testament saints, these people who have trusted God, resurrection power is flowing everywhere. Jesus has been resurrected. Jesus is alive. It's not a ghost swarming around. It's not a spirit. It's Jesus in His flesh. Yeah. The same flesh that was impaled upon the cross. The same flesh had the scar on its side. Amen. The hole, the nail scars in His hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. He would show those to a doubting Thomas later on. And say, you want to see? You want to see? Yeah. Here they are. Amen. And so all these people are walking around. Resurrection power was alive then. Amen. And because Jesus is still alive. Amen. Call me crazy if you want to, but I believe resurrection power is still alive now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so after his resurrection, they went into the Holy City and appeared to many. But in our text, from this gospel account of Matthew, we've seen earlier on, despite all the other things that happened, we could spend all day talking about those things. But I want to focus in on that temple veil being torn and all that would take place afterwards. Now it's important, like I said earlier, to realize the significance of the torn veil by knowing the origin of the veil. Alright? Now in the Old Testament tabernacle, God instructed Moses on everything. Amen. On how everything was to be outlaid, how, how everything was to be constructed, what type of material they were supposed to use. This right here, our prayer box, our very prayer box is a small, very small replica of the Ark of the Covenant, with this being cherubim, this top being the mercy seat, amen, we know that the things inside were Aaron's rod that budded, uh, manna that had, uh, and the Ten Commandments were inside of it, amen, and that Ark of the Covenant would be placed in a place in the, temp in the temple, in the tabernacle called the Holy of Holies, and there was a veil of it. Amen. And then there was a place called the Most Holy Place. And that's where the Levitical priests would come in and do their duties. But the high priest, the high priest, it was his job each year, once a year, to bring in a spotless lamb, a spotless sacrifice. And lay him down and sacrifice him on the altar before God. And when the priest would go into the Holy of Holies, he would ask for forgiveness for his own sins, and he would ask forgiveness for the sins of the people. One priest making a sacrifice for the entire congregation, Amen. for the entire nation, for the entire people. Amen. Amen. And he would even have a rope tied around his ankle. And he would say, if I don't come out, that means the glory of God, the power of God was too strong. And I had too much unaddressed sin in my life. And my best hasn't been good enough today. And that was under the law as he went in. And he would say, if I don't come out on my own, you're going to have to drag me out. Amen? And so that's what they had to do then. 
But how many know that the Bible says that Jesus is our high priest? Amen. And because of what He did and the sacrifice that He made, you and I can now go straight to the throne of grace. Amen. We can approach the throne boldly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have to do what they did. We can approach the throne boldly. Now the veil has been torn. Because it did in reality 2,000 years ago. It has spiritually been torn when we say yes to Jesus Christ. And I mean a real yes. Amen. Not a give a problem solved and I'm going to go right back to what I was doing next week. I mean a real yes. Now I'm going to have one foot in the church. But why well, ain't nobody looking? I'm going to do this. No, I'm talking about no excuses. I'm talking about change. I'm talking about a transformed mind. I'm talking about a changed life. I'm talking about being blood bought, born again. Amen. I'm not the same as I used to be. I'm talking about real, real spirit filled salvation. Let's make sure we know what we're talking about here. Amen. Amen. Spirit filled change. Salvation. Hallelujah. When we said yes to Christ and we're that way, we live that way. The veil's been torn. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Apostle Paul, who fully knew what it meant to have the veil torn in his life spiritually, wrote to the new Christians at the church in Corinth, saying, in verse 18, he said, But we all with, say it with me, unveiled face, unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Somebody say the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. An unveiled face. Maybe I can look on God. I can be in His presence. I can approach Him. I can approach a holy God. I can talk to God. It's not about my religion. It's about me having a relationship. Hallelujah. Religion will keep the veil up. But relationship one-on-one, -on -one, hallelujah, tears the veil down. Hallelujah. And I can have an unveiled face. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord being transformed into Him. Hallelujah. When we go from glory to glory here on earth, we're going to higher levels. God is chipping away those things. Hallelujah. He said, well, Pastor, I'm still dealing with this. Well, you just keep going after God, and those things are going to chip off the more and more. Hallelujah. Don't try to keep lying. Don't try to, try to keep hiding. Don't keep trying to pretend you're something that you're not. Amen. But keep going after God and want to change. And want God more than anything else. And when you want Him more than anything else, those things will chip away at you. And you'll experience a freedom. But if you still have those things in your life, then you're still in bondage. You still have a bondage. Hallelujah. And He paid too great of a price for His people to walk around in bondage. Hallelujah. And so Paul talks about being transformed to the same image from glory to glory, higher levels, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. A veil torn life. Are we living that way? Are we living this way? Like I said a while ago, religion has an untorn veil. Religion has an untorn veil. Meaning with religion we go through the motions. We go through the motions. And we do the things we're supposed to do to get our name checked off. I'm going to show my face because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go through the motions. And I'm going to do like this. And I'm going to say this in a prayer because I heard Pastor Daniel say that in a prayer. And I heard Pastor Jerry uh, preach that way. I think I like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And, amen. If you're just mimicking and mocking and, and, and trying to do this and do that, amen. But you're not taking on the change. And you're not wanting Him. Hallelujah. It's not about what I do or what anybody else does. It's about what He did over 2,000 years ago. And do you accept it? Do you receive it? Are you walking in it? Are we living this way? If we're not, if we're not, and we want to hide this, and I want to hide that, amen. You're in chains. You're in bondage. You are in religion, and the veil's not been torn. Come on, let the veil be torn. Jesus tore the veil. Relationship, though, has a torn veil. Amen? There's an investment and there's freedom in that relationship. It's not about works lest any man should boast. I know that. But there is an investment. There is something that I'm doing. 
There is something that I'm doing. I'm working out my own salvation through fear and trembling. Yes, I'm not perfect. Hallelujah. But I do, hallelujah, what I do for Him and for the glory of Him. And I chip away at His flesh. And I said, was this for me or was this for you, God? God, if it looks like it was for me, tear it off me. Tear it off me. Take it away, God. I just want you. I just want to represent you. Hallelujah. And we surrender every area of our life. Amen. Am I preaching something too hard to accomplish? No. Because you know what it looks like? You know what it looks like? It looks like this. It looks like this. Hands raised saying, God, take me. God, I surrender. I want your will to be done. No, no. Every time I put my hands to it, God, I mess it up. I mess it up. Every time I try to do this or put this into place and try to manipulate and make it happen, oh, everything blows up in my face. But God, I want you to do it today. I want to surrender everything, hallelujah, to you. I couldn't have quit drugs and alcohol. I could have had my mind cleaned up, hallelujah, and my marriage spared. Had I not, I wouldn't be able to celebrate 12 years of marriage today had I not surrendered and allowed that veil to be torn in my life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When we live veil-torn lives, we'll advance. Somebody shout amen. Amen. When we live veil-torn lives, we'll advance. How many want to advance? Amen. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Do you want to be struggling with the same things you've been struggling with? Or do you want to go to such a level with God that that very thing that would have knocked you down and kept you depressed in the bed for two weeks, popping hot, pop, feel good, nervous pills, and all these other things, maybe taking a drink or taking many drinks or whatever, would backslide you back into this or that, whatever. Do you want those things to keep tearing you down? Are you ready to say, mm, man, I can handle this? Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. This ain't God. live this way. Listen, when we live veil-torn lives, we'll help support and we'll help make things that we're a part of even stronger. This church will be stronger. Every church will be stronger. The kingdom of God will be stronger. Your families will be stronger. The fussing and the fighting will come to an end. The struggle. What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Oh, I'm falling apart. I'm falling apart. I know people have their difficulties. Pastor, you want everybody that comes to CFC to be perfect? No. Hallelujah. This is a place for the broken. Jesus said it's the sick who need a doctor. Amen. So this is the hospital for the sick. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But hey, man, when we go to the hospital, don't we want results? Yes. When we go to the hospital, don't we want to get better? Amen? Or do I want to have to just stay in the hospital? Amen? No, we're not trying to have a, a, a spiritual hospital, a long stay hospital or a spiritual nursing home here. Amen? Honey, we want people to be able to stand up. Amen? Hallelujah? Our praise reports, many times it says people came home from the hospital. Amen? Are well, you ready to go home in glory? Are you ready to advance and start living in serving God and knowing who you are? such a way that you feel like you can just levitate to glory right now. You feel like you can just float in the clouds right now. You feel like you can get on a rapture cloud taxi cab right now. A chariot of fire right now. Because you've gone to such a level. <laughs> but if we keep on, I'm trying to behave here. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm watching every word I say here. Because I don't ever want chastisement to come from here. If you come in here and get beat up, why would you want to come back? But I'm going to tell you something. I say this from my heart. I say this from my heart. It doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know. Know this. The veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. And if you'll go after Jesus Christ with all you've got, not all you're not, it don't matter what you are. It matters who He is. He will make you who you are today. He will mold you in who you are today. Don't worry about what you can't learn, what you don't understand. If you'll just remember that when Jesus died on that cross, that veil was torn. And now we can go to God 
And now we can have a relationship with God. It's not about you piggybacking on any great Christian's relationship with God. It's not about, amen, well, if, if, if He don't pray for me, I'm not going to get a breakthrough. I am here to tell you, if you are a blood-bought, born-again child of God, you can cry out to God just like I can, just like He can, just like He can, just like she can. Amen. We have that access. And there's nothing wrong with trusting people's anointing and honoring the anointing on people's lives. I get that. Amen? And when we honor people's anointing, when we honor our leaders in ministry, we're honoring God. Hallelujah. But my God, they won't always be there. They might not always be there. Amen? And that's when God says, slid everybody out of the way. That was a time of isolation for me in this ministry. Where God would not allow me to pick up the phone and call this person or that person. Because I had gotten too dependent on people. And God says, I am all you need. I called you. I brought you here. Lean on me. Talk to me about this. He's either real or not. He's either Lord of all or Lord of nothing. And He's Lord of all. He's Lord of all. He's Lord of every problem you got. Every issue. Every setback. Every shortcoming. Every, every mistake. Anything. God is Lord over it. Take it to Him. The veil has been torn. We don't have to wait till Sunday. The veil has been torn. So you can go to Him on Thursday morning. You can go to Him on Friday morning. The veil has been torn. And when we do that, guess what? We'll get stronger and stronger. In the beginning, we're going to be weak. But we ought to get somewhere. We ought to get off the milk and go to the, the meat. You know, when you're training for a child, they'll be by your side for a while, won't they? But after a while, they expect you, come on, you can do this. We've been showing you how to do this every day. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And after a while, there's going to be an, there's an issue in things they showed you again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're talking about a veil torn life. That don't mean we're going to always have all the answers. That don't mean that we're always going to know exactly what John 3, 16 said. We'll be able to quote this or that. Amen. But we know, hey, I know this much. I know that when Jesus died, that veil was torn. And I'm going straight to the Lord. And I'm not, maybe, and you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I've not been called to preach. I've not been called to do that. Amen. That's fine. No, not, not all are. But we've all been called to have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And treat Him as just as real as anybody in our family. You can talk to Him. You can love on Him. Amen. That's what, you know what Sister Lisa was doing while here? She was leading us into His presence. Amen. And there was a tangible feeling of the presence of God Almighty that is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we were reaching out for Him. Amen. And we were tugging on Him. And guess what? God wants you to tug on Him because He can't be drained. People can be drained. People can be drained. I need you. 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 People can be brought down and drained, but God can never be drained because He's more than enough. Just a little bit of Him is more than enough. Hallelujah! What He's got never runs out. Man's energy will run out. Man's patience will run out because men are not perfect, but we serve a perfect and holy God who never runs out. Hallelujah. We've all had hard times. Amen. Amen. But even in our hard times, we can stand. Amen. And when we've done all this to stand, we can keep on standing. Oh, what's already been done. I mean, God don't have to do a new thing for that veil to be torn. It was torn over 2,000 years ago. We just got to live like it. We got to live like it. Hallelujah. We got to live as though that veil has been torn. Now, if we want to cry out the feet and say, I can't do this anymore. I can't make it. I'm not going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. And go ahead and hang that veil back up. Go ahead and hang that curtain back up. But either it's been torn in your life or it hasn't. Either He is who He said He was to you or He isn't. And we'll come and we'll listen to someone teach about it. We'll listen to someone proclaim His Word. We'll listen to singers proclaim His word in song. And we'll walk right out of here. And we'll still live as though there's a great gulf. As though there's a veil between us. 
and we can't touch you. I'm here to tell you right now that veil has been torn. But has it been torn in your life? If you're just going through the motions and you're doing this and doing that and keeping up with a set of rules, then you're suffering from religion. And religion keeps that veil up. But if you know who you are in Christ and you accept that gift that He paid and you, you decided one day I'm going to quit making excuses and I'm going to make changes and you're walking in that freedom, then guess what? That veil's been torn in your life. And you can just hug and love on God and talk to Him. Hallelujah. And experience the joy. The joy of being born again. Not just out of staying out of hell. Not just out of avoiding an eternal punishment. But having the joy of the Lord in your life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. It's not just about getting out of trouble in eternity. It's about learning how to live like a kingdom man and a kingdom woman now. And if we're going to live in the kingdom, we need to start acting like the kingdom and walking like the kingdom and claiming the things in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And not falling apart when every little thing comes down upon us. Hallelujah. Marriages. Marriages will not thrive if only one person in that marriage is trying to walk and do kingdom living. You've got to walk together in kingdom living. Amen. It is not about who knows more or who reads the Bible more. Amen. Well, yeah, it is. Because you know what? When you love Jesus, you're going to want to read about Him. You're going to want to study about His Word. You're going to want to learn from Him. You're going to say, oh, God, I want to hear what you have to say. You're going to want to pray. You're going to want to come to church because you're in love with Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Jerry said one time, he said, well... If people love the Lord and don't ever want to come to His house and worship, it'd be like a husband who never wanted to come home. Would there not be some problems there? Yes, I love my wife, but I'll never come home. Amen? God, I love God, but I'll never come home. It's time to come home. It's time to get involved. It's time to praise God. It's time, it's time to live for Jesus. It's time to live bell torn lives. Not just part-time, but all the time. Come on, I ain't preached like this in a while. Y'all don't, don't, don't give me a free ride today. Come on. It's time to live veil torn lives. From the top to the bottom. Only He could have done it. Only He could have done it. You can't do it. Only He could have done it. And He did it over 2,000 years ago. Are you walking in it and enjoying it? I want all that He has to give. He's my Father. He wants to spoil me with His love and with His joy and with His power. Sometimes I see him, Brother Brian, in the spirit, just taking a spiritual shovel and just throwing out the anointing, throwing out the glory, throwing out the, the, the power, throwing out the blessings, throwing out those things. Hallelujah. And I just got to stand out here with a bucket. I'm going to catch it, boy. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch every bit of it. Amen. If it falls on the ground, I'm going to dig it up. And I'm going to carry it with me. Because I want all that you have. Because that veil's been torn in my life. And I'm bound and determined. Then I'm not going to hang it back up and live as though it's not been torn. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love y'all. And I love what you do. Amen. But you can't give me what he's got. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. You can pray with me. Amen. But you are not the source. He is the source. He is the source. He's the one I can call on in the middle of the night. Guess what? I'm not waking him up. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. Because his eyes and his mind are on me. You might listen to this today and say you're trying to get out of your job, aren't you? No. <laughs> There's plenty to do. There's plenty to do. But what do I want to accomplish out of this? I want that laughter. I mean, excuse me. I want that pain to turn into joy. I want those tears to turn into laughter. I want those struggles to be milestones that you look back on. Amen. And then. And that you six yes. months later, you're not struggling with that same thing yes. anymore. Oh, I conquered that. I put that devil six Come months on, ago. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to walk in here with freedom Amen. and victory. Amen. And self-assurance and self-confidence. Know who you are in Christ. Amen. You're not going through an identity crisis. Hallelujah. Your identity was decided for you over 2,000 years ago on Calvary. Do you know who you are? Torn. 
Now let it be torn in your life. Was this alright for a Sunday morning?